Hey guys, number one Marduke fan here. I'm gonna do a quick review of Super Mario Manga Mania by uh, old Yukio Sawada. If you're wondering, this has absolutely nothing to do with the Nintendo Power comic uh, that was written by Kentaro Takekuma, art by Charlie Nozawa. I've, I reviewed this like maybe two or three years ago. I'd give it a high recommendation. Uh, it's really fun. It kind of has like a philosophical, like, is this manga? Is it manga if manga artists make it, but they don't make it like manga? They make it left to right like an English comic? Who cares about the philosophical discussion? It's a great fun comic, and you should go get it. it it's, a, it's an absolute blast. Super Mario Manga Mania is literally a manga in every sense of the wor word. Uh, done in the manga format, published in uh, a manga magazine in Japan, using a lot of sort of very, I don't know, stereotypically Japanese style humor. Uh, I'm going to give Super Mario Manga Mania a qualified recommendation. I like that it exists. I like what it is. Uh, it is on purpose writing goofy, silly, funny stories for Mario with like a six to 10 year old audience in mind. And I think it does a good job of doing that. I wouldn't want to read volume after volume. I wouldn't want to read like 50 volumes of silly, goofy, dumb joke adventure stories with with Mario that are targeted at, you know, six-year-olds and 10-year-olds. But, you know, six-year-olds and 10-year-olds love Mario. And I, I kind of want there to be more all-ages manga printed in English. And Mario is a character who's famous enough. Like if they tried to bring over um, like Doraemon or one of the all-time famous you know, Japanese kids characters, maybe there'd be a bit of a cultural boundary that would keep kids from checking it out. But, you know, American kids love them some Mario. So if, I have a feeling if you started publishing Mario manga, they would they would latch onto it and read it. You know, some of the things like fart and poop jokes, I think those are universal and kids are always going to get a kick out of those. Some of the gags are very specifically Japanese and you can tell that some of the Japanese puns got lost in Tran translation, but uh, I, I I don't know. Like I wouldn't buy fifty volumes of it, but I could imagine buying several volumes of it for a kid. This collection is a greatest hits. They had Yukio Sawada choose some of his favorite stories that he'd done over a very long career. He's been doing this comic for twenty five years. So what's kind of fascinating about it, just from like a Mario nerd, you know, thirty year old Nintendo boomer history perspective, is just that this little piece of Mario history has always existed and very few people in the States are aware of it. And it's also kind of neat because they let Yukio Sawada do naughty things with Mario. So it, it's very much different than his sort of squeaky clean corporate mascot image he's had since the late 90s. This is more Mario as just a goofy, chaotic dummy who goes on adventures and fights bad guys and tells and tells dumb jokes, including lots of jokes involving butts and poop. I, I, I kind of, I'm kind of happy that it exists, even if it is, even if it's ridiculously immature, it's very good at being what it's supposed to be. So I'm just going to flip through a little bit of it. There's a little thank you note at the beginning where he talks about appearing on Japanese uh, television, and they actually counted the number of time uh, poop and fart <laughs> appeared in the 52 volumes. Let's see, poop appeared 119 times and fart appeared uh, 77 times. Those numbers actually seem low to me, but don't worry, I tried to choose somewhat more decent selections for this best of collection. So I'm sorry to say you probably won't come across too many poops and farts. <laughs> He, he he knows his audience. T six year olds to ten year olds dig that stuff. It's one of the first things that kids find funny. They are funny. I, 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 it's, it's lowbrow humor, but I think lowbrow humor is actually important for kids. And you shouldn't. Uh, you, you, you should be understanding if kids like some lowbrow humor. It's also really interesting that this spans Mario's history. And so there are little goofy adaptations of many different games, like going all the way back to the uh, N64 era. So, you know, Mario does stupid things like uh, he's too dumb to cross the bridge, so he uses one of his uh, partners as a bridge to cross a, to crawl across Mach. He just does goofy, stupid stuff like that throughout the adventure. And old Yukio, he has some like little notes about how in each adventure you get to meet new characters and you have to say goodbye to these characters at the end. So he tries to give them the spotlight uh, while while they're there. Uh, 
For this greatest hits collection, it was a real challenge to choose just eight or nine out of almost 700 chapters across 52 volumes. The Baby Yoshi story is one of my favorites, but it had to be cut because there wasn't room in the book. Personally, I'm a fan of the stories where Mario doesn't appear. For instance, he doesn't show up in Stage 7 of Volume 27 or Special Stage 1 of Volume 29, but he's still pivotal to the story. Then, on a slightly different note, you have ones like Stage 10 of Volume 40, which puts the spotlight on Bowser and the Goombas. If the chance arises, I'd like to include those sorts of stories in a future volume of Super Mario Manga Ma Mania. Uh, yeah, I, I think, I actually think, I, I, I'm a little hesitant because I wonder, would this connect with a 6 to 10 year old American audience? I think they should give it a shot. I think Mario is enough of a killer app, they should go ahead and try to release a unabridged account of the, these manga and just see if American kids go for it. Maybe they're kind of testing the waters uh, with this, you know, greatest hits ab abridged volume. Uh, and I maybe the 30-year-old Nintendo boomers who are still playing Yippee Wahoo games like me, maybe will help boost the sales a little a little bit. Uh, Why'd I, mark, why'd I mark this? Okay, so another neat thing Yukio does is he's very aware he's making a goofy comic, and so he continually calls attention to that and basically tries to stuff every page with something funny happening. So there'll be pratfalls when so, when Mario tells a stupid pun, and then like there'll be like the feet sticking in the air of someone pratfalling. But who are they? And they're just sort of stuck off in, in, in the margins. Uh, he described later that he took inspiration from like a Japanese comedy show I don't know anything about, but his idea is what if like go a, a goofy Japanese comedy show did a take on Super Mario Brothers and I brought in characters from the games and gave it that kind of a tone. So it's sort of really fast paced, irreverent uh, humor. And he Yukio himself shows up a lot as a character making fun of what an old farty is and how he's been doing a Mario comic for uh, tw 25 years. And he'll probably be doing this comic for another 25 years when he's 88 years old. He's very self-aware of the absurdity of the whole situation. So it continues much like that uh, towards the end. And the very last story, they give like a parental note, like this, this story discusses the death of a parent. Uh, which is why they put it at the back. And it's a really odd, interesting little story. Like I can tell why Yukio would include it in a, in a personal favorites list because he's talking about a very personal story in Super Mari, Mari Old. And part of his point is that at one point in his life, his father was diagnosed with cancer. And when his father was diagnosed with cancer, he had to keep writing a goofy, silly Mario comic. And uh, Yu-Gi-Oh got so sad that he was actually uh, hospitalized. He doesn't get into too many details. But basically what his takeaway was, was at the time, it actually made him sad to keep writing this comic. But then later on in life, looking back on it, he realized that doing this comic helped him get through a really tough patch in his life. And so it's it's just kind of strange. It's kind of strange. So it, it's it's celebrating Mario's 25th anniversary. And Luigi goes to visit Mario and Mario feels like an old man who's been fighting for 25 years old. He doesn't think he has it in him any anymore and he doesn't know how to be jokey any anymore. You know, his hands are all worn out and tired. And so they, they do some goofy jokes and Dr. Mario shows up to give him some uh, medicine and says, well, I'm the Mario from 25 years in the future. Then Yukio cuts away and he explains his feelings really suddenly. So one of the reasons this works is that Yukio has appeared in the comic as a character and he jokes about his opinions as the author by breaking the fourth wall. So this is clearly something where if you were reading this comic as a kid in Japan and you were invested in uh, this comic when you were a little kid and then watching your little kid grow up and continue reading the comic by the same author, like knowing about the author and rooting for the author is clearly a big deal for the manga audience. Uh, it, they, they often have like a single creator working on a single comic for decades of time. Uh, the, the the manga author is always sort of writing letters to their fan community talking about their difficulty or what they've learned behind the scenes. So I think one of, the, one of the only ways you could have gotten away with something like this, where the author just literally breaks the fourth wall and talks about his depression in the middle of a goofy Mario comic, 
is the fact that the readers actually really care about Yukio and feel a personal investment in Yukio through through the comic. So after he kind of like suddenly tells that story, he has Mario kind of like get his mojo back and start telling goofy puns again. And then at the end, uh, he he explained Yukio again explains that uh, I had forgotten something important. What helped me during the tough times are the jokes and gags. And then Mario in a goofy squid outfit, your smiles and laughs will always do the trick. And this Mario comic will always be about all about the gags. Good luck, Mario, and good luck, me. And then they kind of like show like the goofy uh, promo they did for it. Uh, all of Japan shocked by Taboo comic. And then Yukio tells a little bit about the behind the scenes stuff. Like he was originally going to talk in more detail about his dad's death, and he decided that would be too heavy. So he reserved it to just basically briefly mentioning his father's passing uh, in the comic. And he's thankful to Nintendo for letting him do this. Like, think about this. Like, this is Mario, like a squeaky clean corporate mascot. They are letting a manga author do a very personal story about the death of his father in a goofy gag comic aimed at ages six to 10 readers. That is a real risk on Nintendo's part. Can you imagine them doing any, can you imagine a company doing something that risky with like a character that symbolizes the company in some ways. I think one of the reasons they're willing to do it is they basically respect Yukio for having built up the character in the Japanese manga market. So it's like he earned a lot of credit with Nintendo. So they let him do something really personal and really uh, deep, deeply felt and really risky. And then he does like a little bonus illustration where he talks about, you know, Nintendo doing some kind of like card game that he couldn't attend so we did a little illustration for them to apologize for not being able to attend the card game like it's like mario is popular in the united states it's clear he has kind of like a special cultural symbolism in japan where it's like this is one of our culture's creations he's beloved all around the world it's so cool that we the japanese created Mario. It's just like a good example of how if your culture creates something, it makes everybody feel good that you're the culture that created it and brought it into the world. Do you have any other like closing notes? Yeah, and then just kind of like a little couple little closing notes thanking all the people who helped make this happen and how he touched multiple generations. He'd have like parents come and tell him, I read your comics when when I was a kid and now my kid's reading your comics. So he clearly just got like a great job where he can spend basically his whole life telling fun, fun, silly little Mario gag stories. And he's really good at it. Uh, the tone of the humor, I didn't laugh all the time. Some of them are like very much, oh, I, these are Japanese gags. I can sort of pick up on the Japanese cultural ideas. This is, this is lambasting. Some of the gags are universal. I, I think an American six-year-old to 10-year-old would get a big kick out of this comic. It's really interesting just from like a, wow, this is a really weird piece of Mario's history. I'm kind of glad they're, they're doing this because throughout the history of these characters, they've always had this sort of clean cor corporate mascot vibe to them but there have often been examples where nintendo would just do something really weird or really experimental or really risky with this characters and this is a prime example of that if they uh I'd, I'd commit to it if they were to release the full the full version i would support it even though it's a little too young for my tastes i would support it basically just to vote that i want more all ages comics in the united states so i would support that if viz media decided to do a uh, full version of this. If you've got a 10-year-old Mario fan, they'll get a kick out of this. They, they won't get to follow the whole story because it's just one chapter out of a few games, but that's okay. They were kind of written to be one-off gags making fun of certain stages of these video games. So they're actually very intelligently written so you can tell what's going on uh, without going back and playing all the games. They catch you up to the immediate plot so even if a kid hasn't played all the mario games i think they'll still get a kick out of it if they played some of these mario games like they got them on the switch or the the new port on the switch or whatever i think they would just get an absolute blast out of seeing the scenes from those games brought to life in such a goofy manga so uh that's my qualified recommendation if you don't mind reading some uh poop and fart gags for six-year-olds to ten-year-olds i think you'll get a kick out of super mario manga mania but a high, high, absolutely super high recommendation for Super Mario Adventures. This, I think, uh, work, it works better without any knowledge of Japanese manga 
stereotypes or uh, cu cultural ideas. All right, that's our 30-year-old Nintendo uh, boomer review for the week. I'm number one Marmaduke fan. I love you guys. Yippee! Wahoo! Let's go! Catch you later.